Well, hello again, and welcome to Rare Classic Cars for another Ports Chat. I thought I would make a follow-up for some of the folks on the Iron Duke or GM 2.5 liter four-cylinder video that I made. And I labeled it one of the worst engines in history, if certainly General Motors history. And it appears a lot of people took offense to that. There, If you read through the comment section, you'll see almost like this bifurcation or bimodal distribution in how people feel about it. And often what you see is the people who had the engine in the S10 pickups with manual transmissions in particular say, I loved it. How could you call it a worst engine? It was reliable. It's in the Grumman LLV postal vehicles. I put 250,000 miles on mine and it was just fine. It never gave me any issues. And first of all, if you watch the video that I posted, you'll notice that I admit that it's generally reliable, although they did have some problems. They did have some bottom end problems with these. They were known to throw a rod if you did over rev them. But if you didn't over rev them, they lasted a long time. And they did have the plastic, I called it fiber optic because I misspoke, but phenolic cam gear that would shred a tooth and then it would stop the valves. And in a front wheel drive car, the service procedure was to remove the engine from the vehicle so you could get the camshaft gear off and press fit a new one on the end of it. Although a lot of people found a workaround to that by basically cutting the gear and then drilling a hole and tapping a hole in the camshaft and pressing one on while it was in the car. However, yes, the engine was reliable. I will not dispute that. And I have owned and still own Iron Duke powered vehicles. I have a 1984 Olds Omega Brome and I've owned at least three other cars with that engine. And I would buy another again because it is reliable. However, you have to understand that the expectations of customers in different vehicles are different. And the fact that something is reliable doesn't mean that it's great. Nobody as an example says, gosh, American cars in the 1990s, boy, they had wonderful interiors. They were superb interiors. I couldn't get over how great they were. Yes, the interiors in 1990s America cars, 1990s American cars had reliable switch gear. They had reliable controls. Did they look great? Did they feel great? No. They were plasticky and it was almost like they were made by Mattel or Hasbro. And that was, you know, arguably the bean counters getting to them. So, you know, I think people have different standards for what as an example they view great. In some cases, Reliable on its own means that it's great. Well, it doesn't really. Reliability is a customer expectation. A customer expects something to be reliable. They don't expect it to fail. So from that perspective, the Iron Duke and a reliability standpoint was great, but it certainly was not a refined engine by any stretch of the imagination. And to the point that if you, if you think of the vehicle and the engine versus the foreign competition like the Hondas and the Toyotas of the era. You start up an Iron Duke and particularly in a passenger car the tra where it's transversely mounted with an automatic transmission, it transmits a lot of vibration through to the passenger compartment. In an S10 pickup with a manual where you've got a full frame, you have it longitudinally mounted, and you have a manual which decouples the engine and the transmission at idle when the clutch is in. So you're not getting the drive line, the magnification of the engine's vibrations through the whole drive line because they're decoupled versus an automatic transmission where you have the torque converter and you're able to transmit the vibration all the way through to the drive line in a unibody car, which is less isolated. It's a big difference big difference and unfortunately you'll also read the comment section you'll see for every person who says I had this in my S10 pickup you'll see somebody who says gosh I had that in a pa this passenger car and you're right the steering wheel would shake and the dashboard would flutter at idle and as I mentioned in the video I don't know well, I do know why for emissions and fuel economy reasons they had the idle speed set very low in drive on the automatic transmission cars and I cure a lot of the vibration on mine by on the throttle body, you can tap out a little plug, which exposes the idle stop screw, and you can just turn it up by 50 to 75 RPMs-ish. And the vibration is mostly gone at lower RPMs. It is a 2.5 liter four cylinder that does have uh, some 
some certainly imbalanced vibration that's not quelled until 1988 by any balance shafts. But my point in saying that it's one of the worst is that the, it, the engine was so crude, it sounded like a diesel, particularly in some years when the cam gears would get noisy. It vibrated so much. And people were coming from, imagine they're trading in their 1977 Bonneville or Delta 88 with a buttery smooth 350 or 403, you know, or even an earlier car with a big block Olds, Pontiac, Buick, Chevrolet, whatever. Well, there's a smaller big block. Those engines were extremely smooth, very refined, well balanced. You took that car, even if you were a domestic car lover, you took that car and you traded it in on a car with an Iron Duke, which were not cheap cars all the time. These engines were inexpensive vehicles. An Olds Omega Brome X car or a Buick Skylark limited is an expensive car in the day i my olds will make a brome the sticker is almost thirteen thousand dollars which was a lot back then or a somerset regal or a calais or you know you pick any of these passenger cars that they were used in whether it's the a cars like the sierra century 6000 celebrities the x cars they were in uh the citations the phoenix the omegas the skylarks the end cars, the Calais, the Somersets, the Camaro, the Firebird, certainly the pickups, but let's just talk about the passenger cars. If I bought a high-end domestic car and I brought in my trade, I would not be happy with that engine at all. I'd start it up and I'd say, what in the world is this? Is, is there a, like a bucket of tin, tin bolts under the hood or something? And to me, I love it because it's a piece of nostalgia and it is reliable. And as a used car buyer, I like it because it provides reliability. And I didn't pay much for the used car. I paid $2,000 for my Olds Omega Brome. So long as it's reliable and comfortable, that's all I care about. But if I had paid $13,000 new for it, I would have a completely different expectation of the vehicle. And if I were a luxury or near luxury passenger car buyer, versus a S base S10 pickup buyer, my expectations are totally different and diametrically opposed. The pickup buyer wants reliability, durability, doesn't really much care about refinement, they just want a workhorse. The passenger car person wants something that is comfortable, not only reliable, but comfortable and refined and not crude. And I think, to be honest, this engine being in millions of General Motors vehicles in the 80s, turned so many people off from GM because of the sheer level of crudeness that they exhibited. You can't expect a customer to have had, I'll call it a love relationship with American cars from the 60s and 70s, the mainstream vehicles that were smooth, quiet, well-built, maybe not in the 70s well-built, but they were smooth and quiet, and then go and trade in and buy an Iron Duke powered car and say that they are going to be completely satisfied with that purchase. They're not. And what are they going to do? They're going to get in that car and test drive it, and they would have seen what the refinement was like, and they would have gone right down to the Honda or Toyota dealer, or the Ford or Chrysler dealer, but they probably all migrated down to the Honda and Toyota dealer in those days, given how rough some of the four cylinders were in the domestics. And that's kind of the, I think that engine really tells a lot of the story of the market share losses, particularly for you know GM during that time, going from having share in the 40s down into the 30s. So I thought I would offer that perspective. And again, it's my opinion, but let me know what you think. Put a comment to the bottom. And thanks again for watching. Well, I hope you enjoyed this follow-up video on the Iron Duke engine. If you did like, please be sure to click the like button and comment as that helps the YouTube algorithm serve this up to more people like you. And if you're not yet subscribed, please click the 67 Buick Riviera at the top left to ensure that you are notified of all my future videos. And check out some of the video thumbnails at the bottom left and right for videos that YouTube recommends for you. Thanks again for watching and take care.